Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. You're back and we're back for another half hour of conversation that's meant to shake the world. Okay, not. But in any event, I have some very relaxed gentlemen with me today. People who are retired or who are on who vacation. Wrote the column on the intoxication in the press. <laughs> Cal Potter, retired like state senator. Tom Paneski, professor of mathematics, and I'm sure you're working this summer. Hardly but working. A little. A We're little. laid off. A little. A little. We're a laid little. off. We'd like to come to work. There's nobody dean. here. As associate dean. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, and teacher Ken Risto, just free and easy. I'm Mary I'm Lynn teaching. Donahue. I'm working as a lawyer for O'Neill, Cannon, Holman, DeYoung. It keeps me busy, but in any event, we're happy to uh, have you join us. You need I'm a lawyer, Carl. <laughs> yeah, there's a number going down the screen. <laughs> well, you know, number. in the last episode, we did, you know, sponsor the, the lobster, lobster boil. boil but so now you we, can no, no, we the, shan't do that. Do no, that. no, 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 no. But in any event, I want to pay tribute to someone that I never agree with on anything, uh, and his wife, <laughs> Terry and Mary Kohler. Um, uh, there was a wonderful series of articles in the journal Sentinel, and I know I might be a little sentimental for it, a little anthropomorphication going on here, but Mahal, this really adorable orangutan, was flown from the Colorado Zoo where he had been rejected by moms and surrogates enough to break your heart, and flown out to the Milwaukee Zoo where he's doing fine. And so I think we should thank Terry and Mary, and they often do these kinds of humanitarian things that are a little off the radar screen that you don't see other people similarly situated normally doing. So I think they both deserve some credit for that. So there. You're here. All You're right. Here. I just hope Terry doesn't run, run him for office. <laughs> I think that there are some candidates that Mahal could do very well up against. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely adorable. And from what I understand from the article is... From an orangutan point of view. Yeah. <laughs> from... It's that anthropomorphizing. Ah. I mean, he's just like this little cute guy. Okay. Well, they're 98% similar as human beings. As exactly. much as we don't want to admit it. Exactly. Exactly. So, in any event, I'm going to move right along here. So I'm just going to sneak evolution and look out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not held up to any abuse or scorn here. Um, Wisconsin's not doing a very good job of um, eliminating cell phone use while you're driving. Uh, apparently, any legislative efforts to have that happen have been shot down in flames. Um, California has just implemented a... Several states have. And um, uh, is this an issue whose time will come in Wisconsin? I must say, as we were driving back from the fireworks, this van made an extremely dangerous uh, Y turn in the middle of the street. Uh, the car coming forward almost hit him. And as he's turning around, he's on the phone. I noticed he, he just was, happened to be on the telephone. Yeah. I get kind of wild about it, but yeah. think it'll happen, the ban? I think if we have enough uh, studies, and there have been several, showing that there is a higher incident of accidents, I think eventually uh, the evidence will be there that you can't refute it. I mean, it's not going to go in the other direction. People are going to become safer. It's going to, we're going to have some kids killed or some. I saw a lady in front of me the other day. She had a big dog on her lap, talking <laughs> on the phone and driving a car. And I said, what if a kid ran out in front of this car? I mean, there's no way this woman is going to be able to stop or even notice the kid. You know, so, those so you are know, she doesn't need an airbag. She's got, <laughs> <laughs> she got her dog. <laughs> she, yeah. Well, enough anecdotes. But uh, interestingly enough, in the hands-free... Um, uh, systems have been selling briskly in states where, where it's against the law now to hold a cell phone. But the theory is that it's actually the activity of thinking sure and talking is. and communicating with people um, is, is more difficult. I'm not sure I buy that. Don't you talk to people well, who are in studies. the car well, with there you? Are there, that are studies. there are studies that they've got out there, you know, PET scans and brain scans and things that say that the part of the your part of your brain that is engaged during telephone conversations is the same part of your brain that's pretty much monitoring what's going on while you're driving and while you work, you know, while you're the same section. So it's, what is it, 32% diminished? Something like that was the number? 30% plus or minus okay. of that area was diminished as a result of you being on the telephone. So your ability to drive is significantly reduced when you're yabbering on the telephone. It's different than listening to the radio, which is more of a passive exercise. It's a different section of your brain. Or I don't know about talking or to Or eating someone. your Big Mac or talking to your husband or yelling at your kids in the back seat or whatever. But, uh, but not only talking, I think they do text messaging too. 
<laughs> and so they're and they're reading their texts, you know, they're they're good with their one hand and they're reading and why aren't they reading Dostoevsky? You know, that's what I want to know. Because then they'd be I sleeping mean... by the way. <laughs> so that that's using the I guess that's the same part of the brain sure. if you're communicating, you're not talking, you're texting. Yeah. But uh and the reality is some people don't start very much with very much between their ears, and if they're 32 percent diminished, they're really in trouble. <laughs> I got for Christmas. Yeah, I'll watch your back as you leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got for Christmas one of those GPS things that oh, you know tell okay. you where you go. You know, and, and so you've got this woman telling you what to do. That's not that's okay, but if you're not, I found because you're I'm so a, used I'm to I'm really that. not a well. I yeah. But beyond that <laughs> is the, the little screen. You, you watch yourself on the road, the map. You start watching that map, and pretty soon you're not watching what's going on around you at all. Mm. And I finally simply had to... Get off the sidewalk. Get back. off, well, yeah. Just, <laughs> good grief. Back the car out of the yeah. creek bed. And, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, by that, I knew, but I knew which creek bed I was in. <laughs> you got to look to the side. Yeah. <laughs> and the woman's saying, you're in the ditch. <laughs> Which is sort of like having your wife right next to you. Yeah. She's telling you the same thing. Yes, and you see, I just wanted to give you that line so that you could take advantage of it, and by jinkies, you did. Yes. Um, drinking is a problem in, uh, in not Wisconsin. Yet. <laughs> the series in the press is not surprising. Oh, in yeah. Wisconsin, for, you know, we'll give her a moment to collect where this German culture is yeah. known for years to be. Uh, the tavern yeah. is the old meeting place, you know, the beer hall. Yeah. And... Uh, but people used to walk home, right? used to sure. walk home, though. And I think, you know, we'd say, they're citing now this number of taverns per person. I would think Sheboygan's probably less taverns today than, you know, Absolutely. 30, 40 years ago. Absolutely. Taverns right. per person, we rank fourth. In, yeah. in the state? In the, in the nation. In the nation. In Wisconsin. The nation. Who's won? Do you know who's won? Vermont. Vermont. Well, well I suppose well, a lot so of people. So few people. Yeah. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Vermont has you most taverns per person. Vermont. And well, their population is yeah. you know, small sure. state. Delaware's third, and South Carolina is second, and North South Dakota's Carolina. fifth. Yeah. South Carolina, I would never have guessed, being yeah. a southern state. New, yeah. new definition of Bible Belt, I guess. <laughs> well, I do give the press credit because I think it's a, um, I mean, it's an important topic. Sure it is. We talk about yeah. drug abuse all the time, but people never consciously draw the line between drug abuse and alcohol, and alcohol along with cigarettes, are clearly the two most dangerous drugs yeah. that are in widespread use and that cause widespread deaths. Um, the average estimate is that 400,000 people die every year in the United States from alcohol abuse, and about 4,000 die of marijuana abuse. Yeah. And how many families are torn apart through domestic yeah. abuse and child abuse and all that other stuff. Yeah. yeah, and not to, not to in any way minimize you know the effect of any illegal substances but i mean if we use the same the same thought pattern then we clearly should make both alcohol and cigarettes illegal drugs because of the the devastation that they that they that they bring to a community or have laws that uh, are stringent enough to reflect the seriousness of the crime for years wisconsin was at at uh, 0.15 for its uh, intoxication oh, yeah. level, mm -hmm. and it was like heresy to suggest that it ought to be 0.10, and right. the national government, of course, was setting the standard at 08 a long time ago. Right. And you know, why didn't Wisconsin move? Well, because of the drinking culture in, in, in this state. And now, look at how many people are on their fifth, sixth, seventh drunk driving conviction. I mean, I have no sympathy for somebody like that. They ought to be thrown in a jail and throw away the key for a while. Mm -hmm. But you know, why is it that we coddles people for so many years in our laws is because of the prevalence of drinking. Right. You know, politicians pander to a constituency. Right. Well, if you're selecting a jury and you're asking questions, you can ask, you know, your potential jurors, how many of you have been convicted of armed robbery? Please raise your hand. How many of you have ever, you know, run somebody over? Raise your hand. How many of you have ever dri driven under the influence? You know, all, you know, oh, well. you know, the 15 out of 25 hands go up, and and it's because it is something that you know sadly happens, and uh, uh, people are put in prison or or whatever, and there's no treatment, so they come out and they reoffend, and um, so it it really is a hard problem. But I do think the press has served a purpose here by by at least bringing it into some sort of 
sharp relief. When I was a lawyer doing uh, reviews of people who were protectively placed in nursing homes, it was called a Watts review. It was required, still is. And I was amazed at reviewing the records of these very old people in nursing homes, record after record after record, talking about alcohol abuse in the family. And I mean, it was absolutely prevalent in this area, I think. I mean, at least you know, anecdotally, based on these records that I've been reviewing and such. So, Tom? Well, one of the things we were talking about, taxes, and the article did also say which state had the lowest uh, taxes on beer and which states had the highest taxes on beer. The states with the highest taxes are Alaska and Hawaii, believe it or not. And the states with the the top two states with the lowest taxes, one of them is number one is Wyoming and number two is Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. The $2 lowest a barrel. <laughs> Less than a penny a glass. So we have the lowest tax rate. And so I guess that's always uh, that's, and that's an issue with the uh, legislature. I mean, <laughs> many times when the budget was being stressed and we needed to come up with money, somebody would say, well, let's go from two dollars to three and oh, oh the ceiling came in, you know. <laughs> no, you can't do that. People who are at the corner tavern won't vote for us anymore. You know? mm -hmm. Well, the breweries. I remember that discussion uh, when I was a much younger man. We were tend when I was tending bar to get through college. Any time that was proposed in the legislature, it got close to a consideration. The, our beer distributors came out with very high glossy little tents that they wanted us to put on the, on the bars and the tabletops along the restaurants to say, you know, they're about to tax beer. It's, mm -hmm. And it's going to cost you, you know, much, much, much more, you know, to buy, you know, your beer, your yeah. wine, whatever it is. And people just, you know, just were outraged by that. You were saying uh, before we went on the air that um, that the beer tax has not been increased in I decades. Believe, I, I believe it's it goes back many decades. I, I thought it was way back to the 30s, but two dollars has been on the books for many, many years. Really? Yes, per barrel, not a not a case, a barrel yeah. of beer. <laughs> Wow. Uh, wow, yeah. And a half barrel is quite a bit of beer. Yeah. As but, it, but beers, but distributors and everything, they sponsor baseball teams, softball teams. They, sure. they, 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 they f contribute to quite a few athletic events or other kind of events, mm -hmm. helping various groups. Uh, and so, you know. Well, and I think, yeah. that's as with uh, most things, I mean, whoever thought that we could really entertain a, a ban on smoking that would be fairly widespread. Right. And I think just society changes after a while and things that were well, taboo. Well, it comes from awareness and education. And exactly. I think the series of these articles is very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. I, you know, eventually we need to have national health care. And if we really are honest about it, we ought to start looking at some of the risk activities and see if we can't generate some of the revenue for the health care plan from that. There's no reason why we couldn't have five dollars on a barrel of beer and another 25 cents in a pack of cigarettes and maybe 10 cents in a Big Mac or something and slow but surely you could raise the money to provide everybody with health care in this country and nobody would be any worse for it health wise. Right, exactly. And maybe yeah. just a little bit better off. Sure. Interesting. Well, I th again, the, the graph that was on the, in the Sunday paper toward the back was just and I think that's where many of your statistics are coming from. Yeah, I um, put all the numbers in a spreadsheet yeah. and you shifted them guys. around. I just yeah. I, I like to play with numbers, so yeah, there you go, <laughs> math guys on vacation. So, but uh, in any event, well, we'll we'll have more to say about that. Um, I uh, I'm saying it out loud. How many people here are upset about the fact that Brett Favre might be coming back to play <laughs> for the Packers? Well, I think I'm it's not. unfair to the Packers. <laughs> I think it's unfair. I, I think he, it he retired. Yeah. I'm just, I just love the, uh, the media hype. Yeah. And, uh, it's like this girlfriend that keeps leaving you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you finally just think you get over and then oh, she's back. I know. Well, yeah. this be a good story. Continue. Yeah, continue. <laughs> I mean, I hear tell. I can't speak from personal experience. Yeah, but exactly. I, this is what I've been told. Exactly. But... Um, There's all sorts of rumors going out of Green Bay, you know, all through this whole process that <clears throat> he didn't necessarily really come to this decision on his own, of his own free will. There's been all sorts of rumors that he was sort of given a little, a little helping hand toward that decision. And 
really? Yeah, there's some of that going on, whether it's true or not, I don't, you know, and nobody knows. But, and the other thing is, I think this is just a guy who's, you know, been in the media spotlight for a long, 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 long time, and then pretty soon you're just sort of like being president of the United States, I suppose, in a certain sense. You know, you're just off the radar screen, and you, yep. nobody's calling anymore except Hillary to do some who? silly <laughs> silly commercials. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's very difficult to make that transition, mm -hmm. especially when you can feel that, you know, sometimes I could probably still come out there and still play pretty yeah. well. And you thought I couldn't talk about sports. Just ye of such little faith. But in any event, speaking You're well of faith. Your well-roundedness is just yes, striking. Mm -hmm. um, the, speaking of talking just about silly things, do you think that the assembly will be able to, uh, the Democrats will be able to take the assembly back? Well, I think they're very optimistic, and I think on the numbers, uh, looks good. Mm -hmm. They're three seats short of uh, establishing a majority. Mm -hmm. And if you look at how well um, Obama is doing in Wisconsin and several of the swing states, he's doing well. And there is a coattail. There is a noise a lot, but there is coattails. Um, I think uh, I think there's a good chance of it, especially if Obama does very well in this state. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, one of the things that Democrats have done in their confidence is they've uh, recruited candidates, I believe, in 94, 95 out of the 99 districts, which means uh, the incumbents, Republican incumbents, are going to have to stay close to home, and so they're going to have to tend to their own district rather than out there helping their colleagues in these targeted districts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think the, the <coughs> logistical uh, effort out there is it looks good for the Democrats. Yeah. Um, I noted that um, John Gard has filed a declaration of candidacy against Steve Kagan um, on the elections board site. Um, oh, right, because at this point I didn't know who was running against Steve Kagan. Gard uh, did not have his nomination papers in when I checked yesterday, but it, of course, I'm sure right now is a very busy time at the uh, Government Accountability Board. But um, I am, um, I, I, I think Kagan is okay. I, I don't think Gard can mount a good challenge or. Well, it's supposedly one of the top three races for the Republicans in mm -hmm. the country. So uh, the oh, resources, right? yes. Oh, I did not know So that. the resources are being uh, targeted. Uh, I would say that uh, if the dirty campaigns uh, are, have any effect, uh, it's going to be a close race because Kagan is uh, targeted. Yeah, I, it's it's just interesting to see because he beat Guard by a bit, didn't he? It was yeah. not a squeaker, yeah. Yeah. so. But he didn't um, have a record. He was just the, I know. the mm -hmm. local doctor. You know, now he's got all yeah, these roll call votes. Yeah, and yes, yes. I know. You know what the 30 second ad can do to a roll call vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And the lesson of modern politics, yeah. I think. But, well, uh, I, <laughs> and I think, I and I think McCain country. will do well in Brown County. Oh. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I think he will. And so that coattail effect you're talking about might help guard as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how the political landscape plays out um, uh, across the state. But I think that race will be one of the most interesting. Yeah. And energy costs, you know, have, have another def, uh, def, a face in Wisconsin that's heating. Um, mm, yep. You know, the, the, the prognosticators are saying Democrats have on their side the $4 something a gallon gasoline mm -hmm. cost. But if you're heating your home with fuel oil, that's also $4, $4 a gallon. And when historically you can remember what fuel oil used to be cheap stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how some people can stay in their homes at $4 a gallon with heating fuel. And anybody who will be getting their first fuel fill-ups this fall are going to have a real sticker shock. And that's yep. what it's going to cost them to heat their homes. So they're going to be have another way of being ticked off against uh, whoever they want to be ticked off against. Yeah. And, of course, the Republican response is just drill more. So, I mean, I, yeah. you know, public bad public policy gets made in, in times of... of um, of great need and some panic and a sense of crisis. And it is a crisis for sure. a lot of people. But it's their own fault. I yeah. mean, you remember when Jimmy Carter talked about oh. energy sufficiency, uh, uh, self-sufficiency many years ago, they laughed at him, you know, who's this green guy here talking about these type of things, you know. Talking well, to us in a cardigan. Yeah. 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 I remember that speech from the White House. But yep. there was a fella on uh, public radio <clears throat> this morning who said that North Dakota, just North Dakota, if you put up I believe he said 100,000 windmills in North Dakota, enough electricity for the entire United States. And you could tell this guy was a dreamer, but on the other hand, he's talking about just building these enormous windmills, which of course are now like oil cranes or the oil derricks, that's yes. it. 
I mean, they're they're big, they're noisy, um, they're majestic to Cousin some airs, extent. Cousineers for birds. Yeah, Put exactly. them in California, they got the Santa Ana winds. <laughs> well, and there are, I mean. There's migratory it, bird pattern issues. I, I know, really I know. Concerned about. Yeah. 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 But there are also um, tons of windmills in, in, in California. You know, yeah. you come over those bleached brown hills and they're just fields and fields of them up on the ridge. And it is kind of neat to, to look at, but only for a while. And uh, I'll so take a ride on Highway 49, just uh, east of Fool Pond, and you'll get a shock. <laughs> yes, yeah. that mm -hmm. whole ridge is just filled with uh, windmills. Yes, I've unbelievably, seen that, yeah. believe you see it in a sort of a community setting. You know, your desert maybe. Right. But, out in these farm fields, it's quite an interesting sight to see. So you know, and we're going to talk about visual pollution. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's already going on out but, there. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's considerable numbers of farmers and community members that really consider those a blight and ruining their, their you know, rural rustic views. Yeah. Well, they're they noisy. don't want them out there. They're noisy. And, you know, the classic case, too, is you go out to Cape Cod in Massachusetts, which is a very, very consistently windy area where you'd really, you know, objectively would put these things out there. And no way. Teddy Kennedy and the, and the boys and everybody else who's got, you know, on Martha's Vineyard, they don't want those things out there even two, three miles off the coast wrecking sure. their, you know, their beautiful views. Yeah. So nobody wants nuclear power in their backyard. Nobody wants wind in their backyard. Nobody wants drilling in their, in their backyard. Yep. Coal is not Coal. so neat. Nope. No and kidding. So, I mean, the, these are huge uh, issues and, and, and somewhat hard to address. But and that's going to be a real issue for Wisconsin because a lot of our electricity is generated by coal. And if there's any kind of a cap, or, you know, capping of, of, you know, carbon emissions, it's going to affect Wisconsin disproportionately. Well, and the Oak Creek plants that are being built now by Alliant are, they're huge, huge plants. And um, there was substantial opposition to their building, but they're, they're going up. And uh, so it'll be interesting just to, to see how that plays out. But um, North Dakota actually has some lovely parts to it. And I um, having driven through it several yeah. times. And um, uh, so, and I, I think windmills are interesting to look at, but then again, I don't have one in my backyard, so, <laughs> um, so not so bad. Um, I wanna just uh, circle around uh, to nonpartisan politics. I mean, I, this is clearly the partisan season, uh, and I think we'll have some interesting races and such as time goes on, but um, the Supreme Court continues to um, be interesting. Um, I was most interested in the 4-3 uh, decision in which the Supreme Court said that if somebody, if some stinking liar lies to you about <clears throat> the condition of a house and you don't discover it, you can't sue for fraud. Um, yeah. I thought that was a most interesting decision and uh, I'm wondering if that will be, you know, decisions of the future and uh, um, uh, can't sue for fraud when you've been defrauded. I, it's 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 a unique approach, and uh, so we'll see um, how well, that goes. The, the court decision there was that their remedy was to civilly to yeah. seek damages. To civilly sue damage, right? Damages, right. right? Right. Well, but you can do an intentional tort f for fraud, mm -hmm. um, you know, which goes beyond regular misrepresentation, mm -hmm. and um, it's a powerful quiver arrow in the quiver. Um, you know, intentional torts or, or wrongdoings are. They're naughty. It leads to punitive damages under certain circumstances okay. and, and so forth. So it's clearly a remedy that's been taken away from homeowners. And there is a lot of litigation that happens. And my view is relatively few home people who are selling their houses actively defraud anybody. Mm -hmm. I know it happens, but mm -hmm. it's more or less like, well, I didn't realize that you know X, Y, and Z was going to happen, or my inspector didn't find this, or things like that. So. But nonetheless, which leads to Shirley Abrahamson, as we talked about, I know, before, but um, has uh, launched what appears to be a very aggressive um, race for her reelection, which is not going to happen until next April. She's pushing heavily for contributions. Um, I think she's already raised $200,000, um, which, of course, in the Supreme Court race now is a mere drop in the bucket. <laughs> Started. Yeah. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, anybody there, running against her? Do you know? There are no candidates so far. Um, that may be part of her strategy. Mm -hmm. you know, I think start so. Start early, get the endorsements lined up, get a bank account that no one can touch, and 
maybe she'll be in a better shape than the, the last two races that, that were very, very close and contentious. Yeah. Um, the word is, and it may just be apocryphal, but that Gableman was down the list uh, of, of potential candidates. And only after about 17 other people had said no did he say yes, which would make sense. I mean, you know, a district attorney from a small county up north, but that didn't make any difference, and he was certainly able to prevail. But I think, um, I think Justice Abrahamson, first of all, now the conservatives, if you do talk, think in terms of blocks, conservative or, or liberal, the conservatives have the court now. Mm -hmm. And as often happens at the, the, the U.S. Supreme Court, not so much now, but in years past, you have swing votes, you know, justices who will, you know, Kennedy on the, on the U.S. Supreme Court, um, and it'll be interesting to see if there are any swing votes in the uh, in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. But now the blocks seem 4-3, so the need for um, Wisconsin Manufacturers Commerce to to pull Justice Abramson down are less. I mean, it's less compelling. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it would ensure your majority if you know the best justice that money can buy. But uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. In any event, it'll it'll develop as it develops. Um, also noting that uh, Justice uh, Ziegler has decided to close her campaign account, which means that she's writing off a loan that she made to herself uh, in the amount of $823,000, I believe. Now, they make $140,000 a year. <laughs> so that's a pretty steep you know, price, price. for the, your, your dance ticket there. And um, uh, Linda Clifford lent herself over five hundred thousand oh, dollars for yeah, that campaign, that wow. yeah. So and it's hard, I think, to raise money for outstanding debt. Yeah. But uh, you know. And I think that's why you don't see a lot of appellate court judges probably running for the Supreme Court. They just mm -hmm. don't want to enter the arena. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's their, just their too nest ugly. egg that they probably save for retirement is going to be gone, and you've got the Ziegler example. All of a sudden, you get in a certain bind. You got to write it off. I mean, there goes your retirement for quite a while. Yeah. So, um, but I'm sure she's happy to have all this behind her. So we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for laughing with us, and we <laughs> hope that we see you again soon.